Moving through the city with the Cadillac. Oh, no, no, I'm a mistake. I'm a state of this day job here, folks. We're back in from the action here on the hottest show on the streets, number one form for Crimson Tide Football News. In my own words, with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. It's always great to have the man, John Ivory, the man, the myth, the bona fide legend, the maestro in the production studio. And you guys tuning in to the show as well. Be sure to give a thumbs up, like on the show, hit that subscribe button, turn all of those notifications on so that way you can have the best in news, notes, alerts, and commentary on your Crimson Tide. But before we talk Christian Barmore here, got to remind you of this. You are a die-hard Alabama football fan, die-hard fan here. You love the Crimson Tide. You eat it, you sleep it, you breathe it, you wear it, you go to church in it, you shop at the mall with it. You love Alabama football. Got to get you to TDAware.com. Got to check out TDAware.com and check out the clothing line. Check out the apparel here. We got your shirts right here for you. The We Want Football shirts. Let them play shirts. We got hoodies for you. All types of apparel. So TDAware.com showing that support for the University of Alabama, for the players, the coaching staff, and also us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Check it out there. TDAware.com. But... Christian Barmore, Christian Barmore, Alabama defensive lineman in his redshirt sophomore year. Coach Saban mentioned it in his presser that, you know, Barmore doing well. He is recovering from the slight minor knee injury he sustained prior to the second scrimmage of fall camp. And uh, even though he's recovering, even though he's doing better, you know, Coach Saban still always kind of precautious there. He mentioned that, you know, Barmore's status for Missouri kind of uncertain as of right now. Now, the young man will be back to practice on Monday. Monday of next week, Christian Barmore will be back in practice. And just judging on how good he moves, how quick he moves, how agile he is, depending upon how well he can maneuver on that knee, will determine whether he plays against Missouri or not. But knowing Barmore, he wants to be out there. Believe you me. This young man want to be out there, especially when you when you look at the type of year he's projected to have, the type of success he's projected to have. Coach Saban calling him the best pass rusher on the defensive line last year through 12 games, 26 sacks, uh, 26 tackles, not 26 sacks, 26 tackles. My God, 26 sacks, 26 tackles, six tackles for loss, two sacks, five quarterback hurries couple of pass breakups there through 12 games and we saw the big playability he had in the limited action last year so we know he wants to be on that field and he's gonna look to show coach Saban you know Pete Golding guys I'm good I'm good I can move I can do lateral movements I can go up and down the field I'm fine I can play so Monday will be the moment where Barmore gets back Coaching staff will see how the movements are, how the knee is in terms of diagnosing, you know, him being able to take the field against Missouri or not. Now, should he not be able to go? Should Alabama choose to hold him off? Should Alabama choose to sit him down to make sure the knee is really, really 100% good? Because we all know Coach Saban is the type of coach. He doesn't like to leave any stone left unturned. He wants to make sure everything is 100. Or I said, key, or I said you say now everything 1,000. So if Coach Saban feels like, you know, Barmore, we know you want to go. But just to make sure you're good for the big games down the road, we're going to hold you out here for Missouri. So if the coaching staff chooses to hold Barmore out, here are his potential replacements for that game. You look at Justin Aboigby, the sophomore from Forest Park, Georgia, came in last year. He started the year off with the injury. He missed two games with a knee but played 10 games last season and showed some flashes that he can be really good in fall camp. Coach Saban mentioned him as the most consistent guy on the defensive line and everything and rushing the passer and stopping the run and filling his gap and playing assignment football. So there's Justin Boygby. You also have uh, Byron Young who can come off the bench and help out. Byron Young had a big year last year, a, a solid year last year as a freshman. And then there's one Fidarian Mathis who can play both ta who can play both defensive tackle and defensive end. Mathis has played in you know, 27 career games in his tenure but he's looking to be a bigger leader here on the defensive front so you've got Mathis 
uh, Byron Young and Justin the Boy be one, all three of those will be fine replacements there for Christian Barmore. I think a boy be would be the number one guy to fill in that spot if Barmore is held back, if Barmore is not able to uh, to go and or play against Missouri. But once again, I still feel like him coming back on Monday and with everything that he's anticipated to have done this year, especially when you discuss, you know, getting this defensive front to be even more nasty, even more dangerous, even more physical, taking that coaching from Freddie Roach and manifesting it in the big play on the field. And, you know, along with that, you know, having this defense really just suck the life out of everybody in the SEC and then the entire college football. So he wants to be on the field. And at the same time, he's entering his third year at the program. And when you enter your third year, you know what that means. These, these NFL scouts start watching you. These pro scouts start watching you. These pro teams start watching you. These coaches look at you. These general managers look at you. They, they're all looking at you. And these NFL draft pundits that are sometimes hyped up on hair gel and coffee when you look at Todd McShay, Mel Kuyper Jr. No offense to Todd McShay, Mel Kuyper Jr. They get paid for what they do. But when you look at McShay and Kuyper Jr. and Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks, they're popping tape in and they're wondering, okay, what are we looking at? What are we dissecting? What are we breaking down? What stands out about this particular player? So now in his third year in the program, Christian Barmore is about to get immersed into that type of deal. And, and, and he wants that pressure. And he wants that attention. And, and, and he wants that opportunity to prove I'm right there in line. He saw what Jonathan Allen did. He saw what Deron Payne did. He saw what Quentin Williams did and Sean Robinson and Jaron Reed and just the litany of guys that have come before him. So he senses, hey, you know, I'm next in line. I'm the next honcho. Like, this is my moment. This is my time. I'm fresh out the pan, bro. I'm, I'm next. So Barmore knows that he's next. So because he knows that he's next, it, it is going to be dangerously <laughs> difficult for Coach Saban and the staff and the medical team that goes to uh, Jeff Allen there to keep him out of this football game because the young man wants to play but in the event that you know Saban comes to him and goes look Christian we need you for Georgia we need you for LSU we need you for Auburn we need you for the giant matchups you know down the stretch so if you cannot you know move the way we need you to move this week in practice we're going to hold you out from the uh, Missouri matchup. And shit that happened, you've got Byron Young, you've got Justin Aboigby, you got Fidelia Mathis that can, you know, hold down the four and do what they need to do. But uh, next Monday starts the timetable for Christian Barmore. Will he be able to play against Missouri too? Start the season that being on next week. But Tide Nation, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your Crimson Tide. It's very simple to access this. You download it from the you download the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app uh, from, from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store if you've got the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we have you covered here iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Google Play, Overcast.fm Overcast or iHeartRadio. We got you covered right here. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I shall return on Monday, continuing the conversation that is Todd Football. Once again, Bama Nation, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. But till next time, folks, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate value those husbands, children. It's the weekend. Do those things legitimately now to not be bored. Be sure to get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks. It's been in my own words. Thank you for watching Touchdown Alabama Magazine's YouTube channel. To continue to get the best in Alabama football content, subscribe here and turn on your notifications to stay connected with the hottest shows covering your Crimson Tide.